Things you should never do to a woman. Stoicism. Have you ever gone out of your way to make a woman happy, even if it meant changing who you are or giving up your own happiness? You're not by yourself. A lot of guys are in this situation because they think wrongly that this is the key to love and harmony. But what if I told you that there is ancient knowledge that says you should do something different? I am, in fact, talking about Stoicism. We're going to look deep into the heart of Stoic thought today to find six principles. You shouldn't give in to women or anyone else for that matter. It's not about putting the blame on other people or telling you not to care about the women in your life. The opposite is true. It's about learning how to care for someone in a way that is good for you, their health, and your own happiness. Think about this. Because she gave you hints that she wanted to do something else, you changed your plans. Even though it hurt, you've changed your standards to fit hers. You might not have seen friends in a while because she didn't like them. It sounds like you. This is not how we get to the healthy, balanced relationships we want. They instead make it easy for anger and a loss of self to happen. Fear, on the other hand, can be a leading light. Let's talk about how to handle relationships that are complicated without losing yourself. Are you ready? We should start this trip together, giving up your rights because you're passionate or want to please someone else. It's surprisingly simple to give up our freedom. You could change your plans. You were looking forward to putting aside your own hobbies or even changing your views to fit someone else's needs. It seems like love. But is it? Stoicism asks us to think about these sacrifices. Do we have to give up our rights in exchange for love? Or are we building a friendship where each person can thrive on their own? Take a look. Your honesty and freedom are worth a lot. They are the very core of who you are. You're losing more than just a part of yourself when you trade them for someone else's praise. You're also setting an unhealthy example for the relationship. According to Stoicism, bad relationships shouldn't be about losing oneself. They should be about growth, respect, and understanding for each other, all of which come from being free to be yourself. Think about what you want before you bend your will to fit into someone else's world. Do you act out of love and respect? Or do you give up your own freedom because you're afraid or need to be liked? Always keep in mind that a relationship based on respecting each other's freedom and uniqueness is not only strong, it lasts. Let give up our valuable freedom for short-lived praise. Take a look at the timeless wisdom of Stoicism to help you find relationships that respect and enjoy our individuality. Who isn't paying attention to your growth? Take a moment to picture yourself on a road. Your road winding through a forest full of the leaves of life's expectations and demands. Every step forward is a step toward becoming better, wiser, and finally good. Now picture leaving your own road to walk on someone else's and putting their wants and needs ahead of your own. It's not just a side trip. It's keeping you from growing as a person. Epictetus would say that this is a bad use of our ability to reason and a failure to work on our own growth in relationships, especially ones where we might be too focused on making our partner happy. This stoic lesson is very important to remember. Giving up on your own growth or always putting someone else's wants before your own can stop you from moving forward and make you lose who you are. They didn't say to improve yourself for your own benefit. They said to do it to make yourself and those around you better people. By not working on our own growth, we're not just stopping on our way. We're not giving our partners the best of ourselves either. After all, how can we really make other people happy and healthy if we don't work on our own ethics and wisdom? 
The teachings of Epictetus tell us that working on ourselves and becoming wise isn't something you do by yourself, but something that makes our interactions and relationships better. Finding the right balance means making sure that while we're helpful and caring, we're not putting someone else's wants ahead of our own. 3. Keeping your feelings in check Think about holding a beach ball underwater. When you push it down, it will pop back up with more force and often in ways you don't expect. This is similar to how denying our feelings in order to keep the peace in a relationship doesn't solve anything. We're just putting off the eventual emotional explosion that will happen. This is not the way of a hermit. Stoics believe that we should have a healthy connection with our emotions, one in which we recognize, understand, and control them, not one in which we deny that they exist. It's not just unhealthy to ignore your mental needs or push down your feelings for the sake of a relationship. It can't go on forever. You end up losing touch with both your partner and yourself because of the anger and confusion that have built up. The Stoic way of life says to face our feelings head on, think about them, and let them out in a healthy way. Finding the right mix between emotion and reason is important to make sure that neither one takes over. A big part of this mindset is communication. Being honest with yourself and talking about how you feel are not signs of weakness, but of strength and self-awareness. In his thoughts, Marcus Aurelius talked about how important it is to be honest with ourselves and think about ourselves in all areas of life, including our feelings. Being too dependent on other people, including relationships, Seneca warned us against losing your freedom and letting that ruin your peace and happiness. This doesn't mean we shouldn't value and care for our relationships with other people. It just means we shouldn't base our whole sense of happiness or self-worth on them. Think about the picture of a tree. It might tilt toward the sun, enjoy the rain's benefits, and even help other living things. But its roots and the food they get from the dirt are what make it grow, stay strong, and even live. Building a relationship that's not just about having fun in the present, but also about enjoying the short journey toward growth and understanding. Sixth, ignoring the reason for your passion. If you think of your relationship as the wind in your sails, it can drive you forward with speed and excitement. But if you don't have the direction of reason to guide you, that wind could blow you off course and hit the rocks. Epictetus and other Stoics taught that we shouldn't be slaves to our urges, but should be masters of them and use knowledge and foresight to guide our lives. This doesn't mean stifling our wants. It means getting to know them, asking ourselves about them, and making sure they are in line with our ideals and goals. When we're deeply in love, it's easy to let our feelings control what we do to find a middle ground. Does that go against what we believe? Or to miss warning signs that we would have seen if we weren't so passionate? The Stoics were very smart about this. They remind us that we should look at our feelings through the lens of reason. This way, we can be sure that our actions in relationships are not just reactions to fleeting feelings, but decisions we make after thinking things through. This stoic concept isn't just useful for dealing with arguments or making big choices. It's also about the choices we make every day about the people we love. It's choosing to talk freely instead of reacting. Defense is just to be patient instead of angry and to try to understand before jumping to conclusions. By following reason in these times, we work to make our connection not only passionate, but also strong, respectful, and deeply connected. If you thought this video was helpful, please like, share, and follow for more philosophical advice and ways to grow as a person. Don't forget to leave a comment below with your ideas or stories about relationships and stoicism. Be good until we talk again.